Good evening. Welcome to the Gloucester City Council meeting for um, Tuesday, uh, August 13th. We, uh, this meeting is being recorded audio and visually in accordance with the state open meeting law. Our first order of business is the salute to the flag and a moment of silence. Please all rise. <clears throat> I'll lead it tonight. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I would like to uh, dedicate tonight's moment of silence to Val Babson, who passed away after a long uh, fight with uh, Alzheimer's. She was a dedicated uh, citizen and uh, dedicated to the Gloucester schools for many, many years and made our schools a better place. So for Val Babson, please. Thank you. <clears throat> Before we start our usual uh, routine of oral communication, uh, the City Council would like to uh, recognize one of the very special members of our team, Grace Poirier. Grace, you want to come up? <clears throat> Grace has just uh, completed her. Um, all right, if I'm going to get the, what? Sir, tell me, Joanne. It's a certified municipal clerk designation. Certified municipal clerk designation, which is the gold standard for her profession. So we wanted to take this time to honor that achievement. And uh, Joanne, why don't you say a few words as to what its meaning is? So Grace was appointed as the assistant city clerk um, in December of 2016. And as a municipal clerk in Massachusetts and actually over the nation of the United States, there is a designation um, that to a program in which you do Institute, International Institute of Municipal Clerks. And um, since her appointment, she has attended the Nor uh, New England Association of um, Municipal Clerks up in New Hampshire for three years. And it's an intensive one week um, classes, um, speech, and um, also networking with the other municipal clerks in the New England area. And um, she has done that for the past three years, also taken educational classes and seminars offered through the Institute and also uh, the Clerks Association of Massachusetts. So last week she was, um, uh, she was informed that she has um, completed all her courses and programs and earned all the uh, the credits for this designation and the CMC is more than a pin, a certificate and three letters at the end of your name. It's a declaration that you are proficient in your important position and then you have demonstrated mastery of the administrative skills critical to good government. So it's a prestigious award that's awarded to all the clerks throughout the United States and I'd like to congratulate her for her diligent work in getting this so soon and so successful. She did a job, well done. Congratulations, Grace, it's fantastic. Some flowers from the council and a card. And as you know, Grace, we spend all of our time up here talking. Do you want to talk? You know, the, you know the drill. Right into the mic, please. <laughs> I'm just very appreciative to have gotten the opportunity to do this training. I'm appreciative to the city clerk for giving me the opportunity to be able to spend those three summers doing training um, in New Hampshire and as well as attending conferences. And also for the opportunity to work with the council in clerking at uh, City Council meetings, all of that experience aided in my ability to become certified when I did. So thank you. Thank you, Grace. <clears throat> She's checking it now, Ken. Oh. Right. <clears throat> so Madam Clerk, call the first order of business. Next order of business. Which is turning up the uh, mic, probably. 
Um, next order of business is oral communications. So the public shall have the opportunity at every regularly scheduled meeting to be heard under oral communications on matters not appearing on the agenda. Oral communications shall allow any resident who has a request or complaint of any nature relative to city business to appear before the council, state their problem without debate, and the matter shall be referred to the proper agency through the office of the mayor. The resident will be notified within a two-week period relative to the disposition of same, and a copy shall be forwarded to the city clerk, uh, to the city council. Persons speaking under oral communication shall be limited to three minutes each. The city council president shall not allow complaints as to individual performance. Well, before we start, we're going to try a little technical uh, adjustment here because the microphones, you know, we have uh, once testing, in a while, testing. the city council even gets what it wants, and we've been asking for some fans for nights like tonight. Well, guess what? We got the fans, but they're, they're a little loud. Sorry about that. <laughs> What's the... Uh, Test, test, test. Nope. So we'll go ahead. Um, as you notice, the uh, microphones are, the, the microphone at the podium is a little soft. So speak right into it. Um, so go ahead and name and address and. Uh, Hello, my name is Patty Amaral. Is that loud enough? Great. Thank you very much for your time here tonight. Private, excuse me, 14 Myrtle Square. Private Joseph S. Matos, Jr. Private Janine Nancy Doucette. Lieutenant Arthur Maxwell Parsons. All three have an open space playground dedicated to them, and one will be lost theirs if they go through with the combined school. The word preserve definition is maintain something in its original existing state. Conserve, protect, maintain, care for, take care of. We all know as city caretakers, we can do better. When it comes to preserving, maintaining our buildings, playing fields, cemeteries, and open spaces, there is much improvement to be had. Mato's Field didn't happen overnight. It took the Light Up Mato's Committee and every citizen in this room to make it happen. It took four long years of writing grants, donations, fundraising in our, oral, in our city's CPA monies to make it happen. It took hard work, and it continues to be. Now we preserve, maintain what we have. For the alternative is to watch as another open space falls into disrepair, and Mato's Field is no more, and we have lost another open space for our future generations. Let's all work together to save open spaces for our enjoyment, not for another building. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Next person, uh, name and address, please, for the record. Hi, Mary Ann Albert Boucher, 93 Mount Pleasant Avenue. I am an advocate for small neighborhood schools, and I oppose the consolidation of the East Gloucester Elementary and Veterans Memorial School on all three sites. I'd like to thank each of you for taking the time to take a seat on this council, but I'd also like to say that you are here because you were elected in this office by all of the registered voters. 
we as residents and taxpayers are making a request to hold a public hearing after our petitions are turned in regarding the consolidation of these schools. And we are requesting to hold that public hearing um, before any election. And any vote by the residents and taxpayers for funding for any such school should be on the regular ballot and not a special vote. Essex and Manchester, we could learn a lesson from them. They sent out a survey asking their residents and taxpayers what they would like to see in regards to a consolidated school prior to starting the process. The re residents unanimously chose to keep their schools in their current locations. Please, please consider keeping our schools small in our neighborhoods. East children of East Gloucester will never walk to school or ride their bicycles to school again should we consolidate. We will take away green open spaces that are vital for children and families of this entire community. Thank you. Thank you. Next person for oral communication. Name and address, please, for the record. Hi, PM Steele, 10 Pilots Hill. Is this good? I'm on my tiptoes. Uh, PM Steele, 10 Pilots Hill, Gloucester. I'd just like to go on record as I'm also opposed to consolidating the, three, the schools on those sites. And I also would like to address something that Gordon Beard wrote yesterday. He is speaking for many people in this community, and I don't feel like the power structure is communicating how we're gonna pay for everything in the city, and I think it's really important. We have artificial intelligence coming, we have smaller populations, even though you've all said that a lot of kids are coming, I don't see it. And I think we really need to be more transparent. You need to communicate. If you believe these things, you need to tell your side of it, why we need it, and who's gonna pay for it. Thank you. Thank you. The next person, uh, name and address for the record, please. Take your time. We got plenty of time. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Joe Polizia. I live at 23 Woodmore Street. I had 43 knee operations. I ended up losing my legs. I'm in recovery. I go to meetings every single day. I go to counseling. I have a lot of support out here um, from people in my home group. I can't get into public housing because of my past. I have no legs. I beg you to help me. I cannot rent a second or third floor apartment. I can't crawl upstairs every night. They've got to give us a second chance. If I don't get a chance, I don't think anyone would get a chance. Um, I beg you guys. I have um, Senator Tarr helping me. Councilor O'Hara has been working with me, and I wish you other guys could really help me. Um, I've lived here my whole life. I have two beautiful grown-up daughters and a grandson who's never seen me use. I don't want to be forced out of the city. I have two weeks left in my house, and I'm going to be living in Dogtown with no legs. That's not going to look good. I need help. I really, really need your help. I'm begging you for help. Um, I don't know what else to say other than I made a lot of mistakes in my past. I've turned my life around. Um, I haven't been in trouble. Thank you. Um, I've had 12 letters of references from um, people in para, from cops, from my probation officer who I haven't been in trouble for in a number of years, and they still turn me down. I don't know why. 
Um, if they don't give second chances, what are we going to do? I'm going to be living in the woods and probably have to go back to my old way of life if I don't get help. And I refuse to do that. I'm doing everything in my power to stay clean and to be a member of society. I've, I mean, I've changed. I can't tell you how my life has changed for the better. I sponsor guys. I support, right now I'm sponsoring six young men. Um, I need a chance. I'm begging you for your help. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, next person, oral communication, name and address, please, Doug. Good evening. My name is Doug Shatford, uh, 22 R Flume Road. Gloucester. Um, I just want to reiterate what Joe's talking about here is um, if a guy like that, that we're all trying to um, uh, learn about drugs and alcohol and how this is a disease and, and um, how it can happen to anybody, anybody, doesn't matter if you're a, 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 a policeman or a, or a guy that doesn't work, it can happen to anybody. And if a guy like this that doesn't have any legs can't get an apartment in Gloucester through housing, I don't even know how it works. It's, it's crazy. I mean, he's a perfect candidate. So I know it's not your job, but I just, I just want to let him be heard. He's been heard, and now I want to I wanna speak for him too because there's other people like him that – are gonna come along next, and, and we gotta help these people out, you know. I, and and I will I will just say, this guy has been unbelievable the past four years. The people I've seen him help. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Anyone else for uh, oral communication? Name and address for the record, and just speak right into the mic. Uh, Elmer Magana, 19 Dutch Street. Uh, well, pretty much I'm um, here to say that, you know, I, I am opposed of building the school, uh, the schoolhouse road. In that area, it just keeps on being overdevelopment. I mean, like, I live in 19 Dutch Street. We hear the jackhammers of the new YMCA and the old, you know, Fuller School that should have been the school that we should have built but we left to go to waste. We also hear the trucks of Market Basket. And uh, also like in terms of like the Gloucester voters, I don't think uh, we would approve a school being built 20 feet away from where it should have been built in the first place. So I don't think that it's a good site to build. And also, as someone mentioned, we have to preserve our green spaces. That area, it's been overdeveloped way too much and we still have like animals going around the houses like coyotes that I saw last time, two days ago. And also, I mean, someone also mentioned about consolidating the schools. You know, like, I don't think that's a great idea either. Somehow we always sh uh, shortchange other schools. What about the little schools like Beeman, you know, that are kind of like forgotten or Plum Cove? We should also think about those as well. And uh, as I said, you know, we want to preserve our spaces. We don't want the old veterans or the old East Gloucester buildings to go to waste. That seems to be the mistake in the past. But, uh, you know, you guys seem to be doing your homework very well. I compliment you for that. I thank you very much for presenting all these different options because at the beginning we were faced with just like, oh, you know what, we're going to pull the big school and the park. So everybody got freaked out. But now at least we have options and we thank you for it. But like I said, uh, let us use the buildings that we have and preserve the green spaces, please. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Anyone else for oral communication? Okay, Madam Clerk, next uh, order of business. Next order of business is a presentation from Karen Carroll, Director of Public Health. We got an update on the city's CBD regulations. Great. Welcome, Carol. Thank you for uh, caring. Thank you for coming and um, at the request of the council to kind of 
You know, we've spent an awful lot of time talking about recreational marijuana, but this is yet another phase of all of that. And so we appreciate your filling us in on where things stand. So the floor is yours, Karen. Okay. Um, thank you for having me. And uh, I don't know if this is working, but I'll try to speak up. Okay, right next to it. Um, thank you for having me, counselors, and to the public that's here. I'll try to briefly give you a little bit of a summary of the history of where, where we've been with CBD, what it is, and where we are now. So essentially, a CBD is short for cannabis oil, which is a naturally occurring compound found in the resins of flowers of um, a cannabis plant. So it can be found all throughout the cannabis plant, uh, including in the hemp parts of the plant. So the hemp is defined as part of the plant that has less than 0.3% THC. Um, so it, it gets complicated, and there are some exemptions, as you'll see, to the FDA and the Department of Public Health's position on cannabinoids in food. And we'll come to those in a minute. And they apply to a certain part of the hemp um, plant. So essentially, we started seeing these products throughout Gloucester and area Cape Ann towns. We were not unique. They started appearing all over Massachusetts. About two or three years ago, um, the police, John McCarthy at the time, and myself weren't sure what this was. What do we do? Is it marijuana? Is it not? Um, and at the time, the police commission sort of took the lead on it and initially came out with a position that it is, in fact, marijuana and it would be considered illegal, so we, it's not allowed CBD in any format. That was quickly kind of um, not really reversed, but there was so much confusion and uncertainty that the um, commissioner Carmichael at the time issued another statement saying that at the moment we really don't know what this stuff is and unless the health department or the police department suspects that there's more than 0.3 percent thc in a product they it's allowed it's okay so that was kind of how we operated for a period of time we still get a lot of questions about it but that was where we were at for a year or so more recently, like last month or so, the FDA approved a product for epilepsy, and it's called epi epidiliox or something like that. Because it is considered a medicine now, in an approved medicine, CBD is technically a medicine now and cannot be used as a food or it cannot be put into food. So it is not an approved food source for either humans or pets at this point. I'd like to just back up before I go through their memo. Um, the Board of Health started exploring regs about six months ago or four months ago. Given the uncertainty of CBD in foods and given the prevalence of it in our communities in the forms of candy, granola bars, power bars, um, honey sticks, gummy worms that we were seeing widely available in all kinds of retail environments and they were accessible to anyone of any age. We were concerned about that given the lack of research. The American Academy of Pediatrics also came out with a statement that they did not feel there was sufficient research on children um, to, to say whether this was safe or not. There is also not much research on adults or pets, that's aside. But the Board of Health felt that until there was some, at least some research on what this does in a child's developing brain, that we should restrict it to 21 and older in our community. A number of communities have already done this in Massachusetts. A few communities have already done this, and many are looking at it. So that's where we were two months ago or a month ago. We actually had a draft version of our recreational marijuana regs, which added whole sections about CBD and hemp oil. Um, this is when this document from the state arrived to us, and so the board put the changes in the regulations on hold so they could review this, discuss it, ask questions. So that's where we're at at this point. 
Um, if I can call your attention now to this document that was given to you guys, it's on CBD and food manufactured or sold in, in Massachusetts. And I won't read it all because I think it's fairly self-explanatory, but they've come out with a very clear position um, that no, the Massachusetts Department of Public Health regulates food manufacturing in the Commonwealth and therefore um, no food manufactured it is legal to add cannabinoid. So um, the regulations require that all food must be from an approved source that comply with federal, state, and local laws and must not contain any prohibited ingredients. Because this is an active ingredient in an FDA-approved drug, like I mentioned before, CBD is not an approved ingredient under federal law. And that extends to pet food as well, although the Board of Health does not regulate that. So I'm um, not sure exactly how that will roll out because these products are very popular for pets as well. Um, the one exemption is to hold hemp seeds, hemp seed protein, and hemp seed oil because these are part of the cannabis plant that do not contain any THC. So they are exempt and they are allowed to be put into food or um, other items. Basically all other parts of the hemp or cannabis plant are not allowed as food sources. Um, confused. Um, so I think the Board of Health discussed this at its last month's meeting uh, last week and um, agreed and will be following the recommendations of the Department of Health and um, the FDA. They understand them and we will be issuing a letter to retailers explaining this. Our food inspectors will also go out and help businesses understand the new requirements from the state and the federal FDA and answer questions they have. Um, this is happening throughout communities around us simultaneously. So we will not be the only one. Ipswich has already sent their letter out um, and the efforts are being coordinated by the Department of Public Health. So there are a few areas still to be resolved and we'll work with CHIP and get legal advice as to whether or not we need to amend either our food regulations, our local food regulations, or, and or our local recreational marijuana regulations. Um, these kind of fall, this falls under both, or whether or not um, it's already codified in the, food, the federal food code. So we'll work through those issues, we'll work through the communication, and the enforcement will be handled with routine food inspections um, and complaints as normal. That's a very quick overview of where we're up to. Um, I know it's been a, a fast moving landscape, especially for new businesses exploring CBD. None of what I just said applies to non-edibles. So oils, rubs, all of those things are still allowed um, and they are fine to be sold. That answer your questions, and can I? Are there any additional questions you'd like to ask? Well, thank you, Karen. Um, any council questions, Council LeBlanc? Thank you, thank you, Karen, for being here tonight. Yep. Um, so this is difficult because you go into these little shops, and they're carrying products. Um, you can go into a bakery, or you can go into a convenience store, you can go into a floral shop, and everybody seems to have maybe a little bit of something. Um, I know you said you were going to send out letters to establishments. Um, is there any way we can send something out? I mean, I, I know it's kind of difficult, but send out to everybody in the city that has an establishment, not just you know a convenience store or a supermarket. Um, to let them know that they should contact you because some of the, some of the times you can read something and the interpretation is a little bit different yes. than the than what you're trying to get out there the dialogue so yep. um, I think it would be better served that they reach out to you frequently to, to find out the updates because tomorrow may change 
with what is allowable and what isn't. So, right. um, and I know as a council, we've kind of reached out to you to come up here to, to give us information. So the more information that you feed to us, yep. we'll be able to go back to these businesses that are reaching out to, to us to, to help them. Great. Yes. You know, move forward and not get in trouble. We don't want to see businesses get cite, exactly. cited or get shut down or whatnot um, because it's ever changing. So the more we're educated, the better help we, we can help them also. That's so, great. But thank, thank you. you for being here yeah. tonight. Yes. Um, can I just respond to that? Sure. Go ahead. S so the counselors, you, several of you have been very helpful in getting the message out, and it has been difficult as it's been changing. So we appreciate that. Um, we have also known that this is an industry that's both growing in town, new shops are opening, and so as people have come to town or have wanted to carry this line of product, we've been talking with them about what we see coming down the pipes, and we've been trying to work with them as well, given the uncertainty. So um, many of the folks in town have already reached out to us, and we've been in conversation. We will certainly continue to do that, and maybe even hold a little seminar or training if, if there's a lot of confusion, which there may be. So thank you, though, Steve. Uh, Councilor Gilman. Thank you, Karen. Yep. Um, my question is, uh, the new products that are out, the ones that aren't allowed for people under 21, um, how is the Board of Health kind of working in conjunction with the schools to make sure that there's proper education, both for the students and through their health programs, as well as um, for their parents? Um, so let me just clarify. At this point, there are no regulations for 21 or under. So CBD products um, such as these and gummies have been widely available to anyone of any age. They've not been restricted by age or by place at all until this moment moving forward. And they're, as of today, they're still not technically. So. This is something that is just about to go into effect. Um, so, yeah, so is that what you meant by the 21 and younger, or were you talking more about the THC products and the marijuana? Well, you, for the products that you're talking about today, yep. it's new information, and I'm, yep. I'm, my question is, how is that rolling out so that it's understood in the schools with parents Yes. This, this, yeah. Good question. Um, I think that you know we have a number of coalitions of which our school partners sit on. We have um, J um, Mike Scola sits with us, and we work through a lot of these issues. We tend to be more focused on the CBD, the vaping. I mean, uh, the CBD with THC. Um, but certainly we'll make sure that they're aware of this new policy and understand what CBD is. Many of our partners have come to us with questions as well because it is a very confusing topic that a lot of people don't understand. Um, so yeah, we'll continue to work with them and I will reach out to the schools and see if there's additional information they need in terms of educating parents, understanding what this stuff is. Um, yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Other council questions? Okay, well, like Thanks, the other uh, part of this uh, equation, the marijuana part's ever evolving, so thank you for yeah. advising us and staying on top of it. Yep, you're welcome. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, Madam Clerk, next uh, order of business. Next order of business is the confirmation of new appointment. A confirmation, Councillor LeBlanc. Thank you. One, two, three, four, we have, uh, we have five of them this evening. I'll start right off with the Clean City Commission with Zoe Murray. Uh, Ordinance Administration voted three in favor of zero opposed to recommend that the City Council appoint Zoe Murray to the Clean City Commission, term to expire 2-14-20, and I so move. Second. Um, is Zoe Movement here? Seconded. Nope. Zoe had to, oh, there she is. Hi, Zoe. How are you? Um, so she was up at o &E the other day. She's got a lot of experience, and we're looking forward to her um, helping us pick up around the city and educating the youngsters on how to be a clean city. 
Great, thank you. Any other comments or questions? Simple majority, all those in favor say aye. Aye. aye opposed? Thank you, Zoe. Thanks for agreeing to serve. Next. Yes, next we have the EDIC. Uh, Ordinance administration voted three in favor, zero opposed to recommend that the city council appoint Carl Gustin to the EDIC. Term to expire 7 one twenty, an ISO move. Second. Uh, moved and seconded. Any other comment about Carl? Um, nope. Carl's been before us. I told him he didn't have to come this evening. We all know Carl, so um, he's going to be a great fit for the EDIC. Yes, he is. Okay. Any others? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed. Thank you. Next. Next, we have the Gloucester Cultural Council. Elizabeth uh, Newmeyer. Ordinance administration voted three in favor, zero. Po Zero opposed to recommend that the City Council appoint Elizabeth Newmeyer to the Gloucester Cultural Council term to expire 214-22 and I so move. Second. Moved and seconded. Um, Elizabeth's full of piss and vinegar to get out there and help us do our thing with the, the, um, the Gloucester Cultural things. Uh, she's looking forward to, to working on it. Um, she's aware that we have the, the two cult Cultural, cultural centers, uh, districts <clears throat> in Gloucester, um, and she's going to be a breath of fresh air getting in there and, and helping us move this forward. And she also has been on the board of Gloucester stage for a long time, and as, the, as, as well as the chairman, and so she did tell us about how she knows how to get money. I know. Okay. Great. Anybody else? Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Next. Uh, Record Management Advisory Board. Uh, Peggy Calkins and uh, Jane Mead. So we're going to take these separately. Ordinance administration voted mm -hmm. three in favor, zero opposed to recommend that the City Council appoint Peggy Calkins to the Record Management Advisory Board, board term to expire 215-22, and I so move. Second. Moved and seconded. Anything else? Any other questions? All those in favor say aye. Aye. aye opposed. Thank you. Next. Uh, ordinance administration voted three in favor, zero opposed to recommend that the City Council appoint Jan Mead to the Records Manager Advisory Board, term to expire 215-22, and I so move. Second. Moved and seconded. Oh, what? what? Jane, uh, Jane's here. Hi, Jane. Oh, Jane. Hello, oh, Jane. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for agreeing. Any other questions, comments? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Uh, last but not least, the ZBA, Catherine Schlichty, Ordinance and Administration voted unanimously to recommend that the City Council appoint Catherine A. Schlichty <coughs> to the ZBA uh, as an alternate member, term to expire 214-22. And I so move. Second. Moved and seconded. Any other comment? Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. That it? That's it. Okay. Madam Clerk, next order of business. Next order is the consent agenda. So we have the consent agenda. Any councilor want to pull anything off the ag consent agenda this, this week? Nope. Seeing none. A uh, motion to accept the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Madam Clerk. Next item is the budget and finance committee report of August 8th. No budget and finance. Uh, councilor Memhard. Thank you. Uh, our chair, uh, Melissa Cox, is uh, traveling again, as she's prone to during this time of the year. She's currently enjoying uh, the view from Firenze. And I would like to thank uh, Paul Lundberg and Jen Holgram for stepping in to help cover. Also, Mr. Hecht is off gallivanting somewhere as well. So we carried on without you. We have uh, a total of seven motions before you from the Budget and Finance Committee. Uh, the first, uh, Budget and Finance voted unanimously to recommend that the City Council accept under Mass General Law 4453A a federal grant from the National Park Service passed through the Essex National Heritage Commission, a 2019 Essex Heritage Visitor Center grant totaling $2,500. This is for the purpose of supporting the activities of the city's visiting visitor center, welcoming center at Stage Fort Park. The grant period is from July 1, 2019 through June 30th, 2020. And I so move. Second. <laughs> not everybody wants 
Moved and seconded. Do you want to, anything to say about that this one? Is, this is a, uh, a recurring grant. We're very pleased to put it to work in the uh, Stage Fort Park Welcoming Center. Thank you. And since it is a, um, is a grant, just a simple majority, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Next. Budget and Finance <clears throat> voted unanimously to recommend that the City Council accept under Mass General Law 4453A a federal grant from the United States Department of Justice, Drug Enforcement Administration, Fiscal Year 19 Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force for a total of $18,042 reimbursing the City of Gloucester Police Department for overtime by a police mm -hmm. GPD police officer. The grant period is from May 1, 2019 through September 30th, 2019, and I so move. Second. Moved and seconded. Again, this is an annual reimbursement grant which helps the city to pay in arrears for this, the police department's officers' overtime through the DEA. Very good. Any questions, comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Next. Well, the next one is, uh, is a, a little smaller dollar amount. Uh, Budget and Finance voted unanimously to recommend that our City Council, in accordance with Mass General Law 4464, approve payment of a prior year invoice for services rendered by Language Line Services. Invoice number, as noted, dated June 30th, 2019, and a total invoice amount of $189.68 for the purpose of interpreter services to the Gloucester Police Department in fiscal year 2019, and this is to be paid with fiscal year 2020 general fund police department budget <clears throat> and funds for a total of $90.89, and I so move. Second. Moved and seconded. Anything to say about that? Nope. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Next. Uh, next item from budget and finance. We voted uh, to recommend that the City Council accept under Mass General Law 4453A a state grant from the Massachusetts Office of the Attorney General 2019 Healthy Summer Youth Jobs Grant Program for a total amount of $2,217.60 for the purpose of providing additional healthy summer jobs to our local youth. The grant period is from July 8, 2019 through September 30th, 2019, and there is no local grant, no, no local match for this grant. And I so move. Second. Move and seconded. Self-explanatory. Yep. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Next. Uh, moving right along, the uh, fifth item tonight, Budget and Finance voted unanimously to recommend that the City Council, in accordance with Mass General Law 44, 64, approve payment of a prior year invoice for services rendered by Sentinel Benefits Group. Invoice number is noted, dated July 2nd, 2019, for the purpose of paying an administrative fee covering a period of 6-1-2019 through 6-30-2019 for those city employees enrolled in the Sentinel Benefit Plan for health care expense reimbursement or dependent care reimbursement to be paid with fiscal year 2020 general fund Human Resource Department budgeted funds for a total of $1,145, and I so move. Second. Moved and seconded. Just housekeeping again. Okay. Let's keep house. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Next. Moving along, the Budget and Finance Committee voted to recommend that the City Council accept under Mass General Law 4453A a Mass Works Infrastructure Program grant <clears throat> in the total amount of $3 million from the Executive Office of Housing and Economic Development for the purpose of supporting the Trask Street Area Infrastructure Improvements pursuant to off-site utility and transportation improvements relative to the Fuller Mixed Use Ventures Project. The grant period is from February 15, 2019 through June 30th, 2021, and there is no local match for the grant. Second. Moved and seconded. Just tell us what this is. Yes, this is a very important part of this project. This grant was actually received by the city in the fall of 2018, and the council has previously approved sewer enterprise fund free cash to be used to pay $600,000 of our local match. Uh, the administration is now asking us to bring this grant forward for acceptance. Budget and Finance was advised that this information about the Trask Street Area Infrastructure Project will be disseminated to all residents through several ward meetings uh, very shortly. And due to the need to start the project promptly, which is actu actually at this point shovel ready, 
it is necessary for a motion to reconsider should we accept this grant this evening. And I so move. So first moved and seconded for the acceptance of the grant, which is a simple majority. So we'll do that first, unless there's any comments or questions on this very significant grant. Very significant. <clears throat> okay, then we'll, um, it's moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, thank you. And a motion to reconsider. Motion, to, re motion to reconsider, uh, moved and seconded. We'll do a roll call on that. Remember, this is a no vote if you want this to go forward. Councillor Gilman? No. Councillor Hecht? No. Councillor Holgram? No. Councillor LeBlanc? No. Councillor Lumberg? No. Councillor Memhard? No. Councillor Nolan? No. Councillor O'Hara? No. The motion for reconsideration fails. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our final item from Budget and Finance this evening. We voted unanimously to recommend that the City Council approve a supplemental appropriation 2020 SA number one in the amount of $35,000 from the Stabilization Fund Undesignated Fund Balance account as noted to the school's general fund Central Office Business Finance Professional and Technical Services account as noted. And this is for the purpose of funding 50% of the contractual cost with the town of Rockport for a Cape Ann study for education by the UMass Donahue Institute, and I so move. Second. Moved and seconded. Want to just give us a brief description? Absolutely. Uh, very briefly, the Gloucester School Committee and the Rockport School Committee are engaging in a dialogue over a year now discussing how to best approach the issue of possible regionalization of our two school systems. And it has been agreed that an outside consulting firm would be hired to do an evaluation, and the UMass Donahue Institute has been chosen to conduct this study. The cost of the study is $70,000, and our neighbors in the town of Rockport have agreed to split this cost. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. Oh, aye. whoops, sorry, roll call. It's, it's an appropriation, I, my mistake. Roll call, uh, Madam Clerk. Councilor Gilman? Yes. Councilor Heck? Yes. Councilor Holgram? Yes. Councilor Blank? Yes. Councilor Lumberg? Yes. Councilor Memhard? Yes. Councilor Nolan? Yes. Councilor O'Hara? Yes. The motion for supplemental appropriation FA 20 SA 1 in the amount of $35,000 passes on a vote of eight in favor, zero opposed, and one app. Anything else, Councilor Memhard? That's not all, thank you. Great. Uh, Madam Clerk, next order of business. Is the Ordinance and Administration Standing Committee report of August 5th. Councilor Blank. There are no matters from ONA this evening. Thank you. Madam Clerk, next order. The Plan Development Standing Committee report of August 7th. Um, there were no matters for Council action. However, I do want to remind Councilors that we have a site visit. visit at 9.30 a.m. on Thursday, August 15th at East Main Street, number 116, map 59, lot 53. I want to just remind the public that this is for the city council to be looking um, at the property in light of the different relief that they are seeking. Um, we encourage the public to attend, but they will not be there for public hearing. Um, it basically is for us to ask questions of the applicant based on what they're looking for. And the council will not be discussing it, we'll just be asking questions. We will have the next discussion at the next P&D meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you for that reminder. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, next order of business. Next order of business is the public hearing 2019-041, Special City Council Permit 2019-005, Chestnut Street, number six to number eight, map 13, lot 53, Gloucester Zoning Ordinance, section 3.2.2A, for a decrease in minimum open space per dwelling unit. I'll open the public hearing, but before we start, Councilor Blank. Um, yes, under section uh, 286A, I have to recuse myself. I have done work on this building before. Thank you. Okay, um, 
I'll open the public hearing and those wishing to speak in favor. Uh, Councillor Favaza, go ahead. Good evening. For the record, my name is Joel Favaza. I am an attorney at Seaside Legal Solutions at 123 Main Street here in Gloucester. I am here on behalf of Red Blazer Rentals LLC for the property at 6-8 Chestnut Street. As you may recall, I was here very recently for the same property. I came through here after going to the zoning board and asked for a pile of relief to allow a fourth unit to be created in the lower level of uh, the property. All the relief requested was granted, and as I was writing a draft decision for submission, I realized that the lot area per dwelling unit number had been replicated into the open space per dwelling area field in my application, which then carried through to PND and carried up and through the final vote of the council. So we ended up getting much less relief um, via that special permit than is actually required. Nothing is different tonight than the project I showed you a few months back. This is just administrative. Uh, specifically, last time around, we quoted that there was 1,462 square feet of open space per dwelling unit and that it was being reduced down to 1,097 square feet. That was incorrect. That was the lot area per dwelling unit. The correct numbers are that currently there is 171.5 square feet of open space per dwelling unit, and that'll be reduced to 128 square feet of open space per dwelling unit, making the relief 1,122 square feet of open space per dwelling unit. Um, the owner, as I mentioned, has received the necessary relief from the ZBA and has also received the necessary city council relief aside from this. Um, Let's see if anything else I need to touch upon before I finish this up. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to go over it. But otherwise, um, the, the standard you're trying to meet is that this is not, this is in keeping with the neighborhood density. It will not be detrimental um, as a result of allowing this reduction in open space. And I suppose the last thing I'll say is that the amount of open space is reduced because um, or there's really no green space on this property. As you might remember, this is one of the few multifamilies that will have adequate parking. But as such, the house plus the parking means very little green space and very little open space as defined in the Gloucester Zoning Ordinance. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Any communications? There are none. Any council questions? Council Gilman? Attorney Favaz, I have a question for you just on clarification. Um, it's my understanding that the minimum open space per dwelling unit of 1,250. That is correct. Okay, I didn't hear. I didn't hear uh, that yes, correctly. I, I thought you said something different. I think I just didn't mention what the the, the minimum was. The minimum is 1,250. Okay. Which is That's why I need 1,122 square feet. I didn't feet hear of you correctly. The first no, you, time. You, you heard me right. I just missed that number. Thank you. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? And then I will. Uh, can I ask for communications? Okay. Close the public hearing and ask for the committee report. Thank you, Councillor. <clears throat> Planning and Development Committee voted unanimously to recommend that the City Council grant a special council permit, City Council Permit 2019-005, to Red Blazer Rentals, LLC, for a property at Chestnut Street, number 6, through number 8, map 13, lot 53, zoned CB Central Business, to add a fourth dwelling unit in, in an existing three dwelling unit building under GZO section 3.2.2A, minimum open space per dwelling unit of 1,250 from current 171.5 square feet to be reduced to 128 square feet pursuant to a plan submitted with the application rendered by American Land Survey Associates, Gloucester, Mass, J2290, signed by Kirk Benson, PLS, dated November 1st, 2018. This special council permit is in harmony, intent, and purpose of the zoning ordinance. And I so move. Second. Moved and seconded. Um, 
Any other commentary about this? No, they're seeking relief under GZO section 3.2.2a, minimum open space for dwelling. I think it's well defined, right. and um, I'm prepared to um, vote in support. And we are really correcting a typographical error of sorts that happened the last time because we did have a full blown hearing on this the last time, right? That is correct. Yes. Okay. So, um, in that case, this is a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, call the roll. Councilor Gilman? Yes. Councilor Hecht? Yes. Councilor Holgrim? Yes. Um, Councilor Black Blumblank recused himself. Councilor Lumber? Yes. Councilor Memhard? Yes. Councilor Nolan? Yes. And Councilor Hara? Yes. The motion for special city council permit 2019-005 for 6 to 8 Chestnut Street passes on a vote of 7 in favor, 0 opposed, 1 absent, and 1 recused. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Joel. Okay, um, Madam Clerk, next order of business. Next order of business is for council vote. Motion for reconsideration consideration from councilors Gilman, Nolan, and Holgrim. City Council vote of July 23rd, 2019, regarding the acceptance of the property and any buildings contained thereon, known and numbered as 35 Concord Street. So we have to vote on a motion to reconsider, and that's a roll call. So to reconsider the, our vote from the last time, a roll call vote. Councilor Gilman? Yes. Councilor Hecht? Yes. Councilor Holgram? Yes. Councilor Blank? Yes. Councilor Lamberg? Yes. Councilor Memhard? Yes. Councilor Nolan? In Councilor O'Hara. Yes. The motion for reconsideration for 35 Conkin Street passes on a vote of eight in favor, zero opposed, and one absent. So uh, we can now have a discussion about the reconsideration. I know we got uh, requests from Councilor Gilman, Councilor Holmgren, and Councilor Nolan. So who wants to go first? Councilor Gilman? Do you want to go first? Um, so thank you. Um, after we voted at the last meeting, there were several technical real estate questions that warranted clarification leading to this request, at least in my part, to uh, reconsider. Some of these questions include the specific language of the deed, including the one-time selling price of a dollar paid grants to the City of Gloucester and its right title and interest. Um, what are the next steps when the 35 Concord Street property is accepted by the council, who the lease is between, and a further explanation of the 99-year term that started in November 5th um, of 1985. Um, so perhaps uh, Councillor Nolan and Holgram want to add, but um, I will ask through, the, um, through you, Council Lumberg, um, to request Attorney Pace and be asked to answer some of these questions before we open our discussion. Sure. Uh, Chip, you want to step forward and speak loudly into the microphone? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pres Mr. President, members of the Council. Um, I would had conversations with um, a number of you uh, about some of the questions I think that, that were outstanding on this uh, matter because I think it's a, it's a little bit unique. Um, I'll try to hit uh, some of them as I understand them. Um, and uh, I'm happy to go back through the chronology if anybody would like me to. Um, but uh, just to, to start off, um, there are three transfers. Uh, dealing with this piece of property since 1985, there's three transfers of property interests. At each point in those transfers, from the city council to the chargers, there was a $1 one-time nominal charge. From the chargers leasing a property interest to the Boy Scouts, there was a $1 one-time nominal charge. Then when the chargers uh, sell the property, for lack of a better word, back to the city and you vote to accept it, uh, that will also be a one-time, one-dollar nominal charge. These are not reoccurring yearly charges. Um, once you accept it, uh, a question was raised, what happens to the property? 
Um, procedurally, you'll accept the property. I've drafted a deed. My office will then record the deed uh, with the, the Essex County Registry of Deeds, and then the property will go under the care and control of the DPW. So there are some questions about the lease that's attached to this property. It was a 99-year lease starting in 1985. So my math is not all that good, but I think it leaves about 63, 64 years left in that lease. Um, once the property comes back to the city, uh, it's under the care and control of Mike Hale and the DPW. The lease follows the property by operation of law, in my opinion, and I've got case law to support that. So the, the, one of the questions that came up was whether or not the council needs to refer to the lease in the motion. I don't think you do, uh, for a couple reasons. Number one, when the property left here, the council, when the council transferred the property to the Chargers, there was no reference to a lease. Number two, there's no reason to include it because it follows the property anyway. The city can't, it doesn't give, in my opinion, the Boy Scouts any increased standing, legal standing, if in the motion the lease is mentioned. I think motions, I would suggest to the council that motions need to be clear and short um, accepting the property as designated and there was a motion that was that was done last uh, the last time the council met which I think was sufficient and the lease attaches to the property anyway it comes over um, so I don't think that there's any reason uh, reason to mention it um, I think that's all the the, the questions uh, all the answers that I had to the questions that I had I don't know if any but he has any follow-ups or if you want me to go through the chronology of what took place or any of that kind of thing, I'm happy to do it. So, uh, Councilor Holmgren or Councilor Nolan, any questions since you were the ones who also joined in with Councilor Gilman? Uh, I have no questions. Just uh, thank you very much, Chip, for that clarification. It is it, complicated, um, certainly, especially for somebody like me who doesn't really have experience with leases at all. I, I just want to make sure that we're supporting the Boy Scout organization, and it sounds like we are. Councilor Hecht. Chip, in terms of the lease, who's responsible for maintenance of the facility? Well, the, the lease is, is, is pretty um, bare bones. Uh, so while the Boy Scouts can use the facility, I think it's, it, it's, it, it was the Chargers who had to maintain the facility, and I think when the, the property comes back over to the city, the city is going to be in charge of maintaining uh, the property and the facility. Obviously, I think in any contract, you can read in certain things that may have been left out. I think uh, there's got to be, with the Boy Scouts, the terms for, for what they're able to use it for, and there are no limiting terms, but continuing to use it for a public purpose um, I think they need to, to um, you know, be respectful of the property and not destroy the property and then rely on the city to clean that up. Um, so there's some, a reasonableness standard in there, but uh, over, o overall it'll be the DPW and the city that'll be responsible for the property and its upkeep once it comes back and you vote to bring it back. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Nolan. I've spoken with the administration and with Chip on this uh, quite a bit of different times. Um, the, the lease does go to the property. The Boy Scouts are going to have a place to be. No one's getting kicked out in the street. I'm confident that the city is going to make everything work out. I do agree that there's going to be meetings between the Boy Scouts and the administration and Mike Hale to figure out that how this is going to work together with new responsibilities, if not. Um, but I, I think that I'm safe to, to say that I, I, I'm going to support this tonight and that the Boy Scouts will be in a position that they're going to end up being all right. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, then I guess, um, hmm, do we re-vote the whole motion or just, yes, Councilor Gilmour? May I make the motion? Sure. So I'm comfortable <coughs> moving forward, um, reaffirming the same vote that we made on July 23rd. Um, I move that the City Council, on behalf of the City of Gloucester, accept the property and any buildings contained thereon, known and numbered as 35 Concord Street, 
in Gloucester and recorded in book 7977, page 496, at the Southern Essex District Registry of Deeds. Moved and second. Any other discussion? It's a simple majority. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Well, thank you. Next uh, order of business, Madam Clerk. Next order of business is for council vote is City Council Order 2019-026 from Council Gilman to request the City Council vote to request legislature file legislation to officially preserve for open space and recreational purposes the city-owned land known as Number 5 Shore Hill Road, Assessors Map 99, Lots 30 and 31. Thank you. Um, Councilor Gilman, you want to tell us what we're doing here? This is just a technical matter that we want. We want to be able to protect the open space of that park. And our city clerk, as well as Chip Payson and Ann Margaret and Bruce have asked that we move this forward. Um, and I completely agree. My, my residents in, in Whalers Point take great care of this park and they deserve this honor. So um, having said that, I move that the City Council votes to request the Massachusetts State Legis Legislature file legislation to officially preserve for open space and recreation purposes the city-owned land known as Number 5 Shore Hill Road, Assessor's Map 99, Lots 30 and 31. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, just to be clear for everybody, so this park was created 30 years ago and the council was supposed to do this 30 years ago and never did, correct? No, okay, uh, Joanne. Okay. So in 1990, the council did vote and they instructed the city clerk at that time to send to the state legislature and it was o inadvertently overlooked and under um, Senator Todd's legal counsel, he informed us that there's under their joint rules, 7C, the approval vote expires at the end of the next immediate biannual session. So that's why the city council had to revote this. Great, okay. Uh, simple majority, right? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Next order of business. Next, next order of business is City Council Vote 2019-024, Council O'Hara, to request the General Council draft a home rule petition to cease addition of sodium fluoride in the city's public water supply and request that the City of Gloucester's state legislatures file the home rule petition on behalf of the city based on said petition. Thank you. Um, we have a committee recommendation on this. Councillor LeBlanc. Um, we, do we have, a, we, yes, we, well, this is for, for council vote. Um, ordinance administration uh, voted three in favor, zero opposed, to recommend that the city council forward a home rule petition through the city's state legislative representative for the purpose of seeking the removal of artificial fluoride from the city of Gloucester's public water supply as follows. Um, and I'd like to waive the reading of the, um, the objective. Motions. So it's basically just to remove the additional uh, fluoride additives. <clears throat> Yeah, the petition is a couple of, is a page long, so a bit more. we've moved and seconded to waive the reading. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. So this is just the, so this is just the, the vote on the home rule petition. It is not a vote on the substance of the, of the fluoridation of the water, just on the home rule petition. So. This is a, we'll do a roll call vote. Do you want to say anything about this? Yeah, sure, anybody can speak. Um, yes, so at council, I voted this up just to get it to city council so we could kind of hash it out a little bit up here. Um, <clears throat> I'm not supporting this this evening. Um, I've had a lot of time to think about things and go over um, what we're doing here and you know, just a few short years ago, we had a citywide vote 
on the ballot for this, and it came back about 6,000 to 3,000. So that's a substantial amount one way or the other. Um, so this is just four short years ago. Also, I've asked some of my constituents, and to be honest with you, <clears throat> I haven't had not one single person from Ward 3, which is the ward I represent, come forward to me to ask me to have this removed. So there's really not a lot that I can do for my ward to, to have this removed. I know it's citywide, but you know, and we do things for the city up here, but I've asked a lot of my constituents one way or the other, um, and I haven't really had any feedback in, in, in opposition to have, I mean, uh, in favor to have this removed. So I'm not supporting this this evening. I think that for us to go against the voters of Gloucester just four short years ago is kind of a slap in the face to, to, to uh, not have this more, um, you know, without, without asking them to do it, just having the city council to um, put this out there. So I'm not supporting the home rule petition this evening. Thank you, Councillor Blank. Um, Councillor Holmgren. Okay, we'll go back and forth. I agree with Councillor LeBlanc. I will not be supporting this uh, for the reasons stated. I do not feel comfortable uh, disagreeing with 65% of Gloucester voters. That was a pretty clear margin in that non-binding referendum in 2015. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hecht. I would first like to ask Councillor Payson a question. Thank you, Chip. It's my understanding that from a legal perspective that if this passes today, the city council, that it will trigger a four to six month process at the state, which will give us the ability to vote if we want fluoride, additional fluoride put in our water or not. And that tonight's vote is not about are we putting fluoride in the water or are we not putting fluoride in the water. Tonight's vote is about do we give ourselves the right to take the vote in four to six months? And I just wanted to make sure that my understanding is correct. Yes. It is correct. It is correct. Thank you. So we're not voting on fluoride tonight. We're not voting on whether fluoride's in the water or fluoride's out of the water. We're voting whether four to six months from now we want to have local control. Do we want to control this? That's what this vote is about tonight. Do we here at this table want to control this in four to six months? I was very proud of the work we did, and it was a difficult night when we, we kept local control of Dogtown. I think we've done a very good job on marijuana, medicinal marijuana, learning about CBD, recreational marijuana. We have kept local control on every single issue, and we called the shots. What this vote is tonight is to give us the ability in four to six months after a major public hearing, after tons of new information has come. I have not seen a whole, I have not seen any information in support of this is any new information in support that fluoride is really a very helpful thing. What I have seen a ton of, what I have seen is a ton of information that's new information that shows that fluoride is very harmful to children, to pregnant women, to elderly, to people with other types of illnesses. In fact, we have people at so, this table today so who are affected we, by it. We've agreed that we're not talking about the merits of fluoride or not. We're talking about the process. So, so li what, limit your comments to that. Thank so, you. So what I'm saying is tonight gives us local control. If we vote yes, we get local control. If we vote no, we don't have local control. I'm in full support of local control. Thank you. Thank you. Other councillors? Any other councillors wish to comment? Um, Councillor O'Hara. Thank you. Um, I just want to reiterate what my uh, colleague, Councillor Heck, said. Um, but pertaining to, we've, we've already had two councillors speak on, the, on their statements pertaining to Um, we've already had two councillors speak 
on their viewpoints on fluoride. Councillor LeBlanc spoke about fluoride not receiving any calls from his constituents. Councillor Holgren spoke about the 65 percent that voted against it. So I think it's fair game that we talk about it. No, it's, it's already not, been no, spoken I'm about. I'm sorry, it's not fair game. Well, We're two, not gonna, two councils have already talked no, about it. No, they did not talk Lumber. about the merits of fluoride in the water or not. We're talking about the process of whether we vote for a home rule petition or not. I, I don't recall. That's about. what they said. That's we, what they, they said. They, they mentioned. So Council Holgren the, mentioned the, that 65 percent or 64 percent. The chair is going to rule that that's what we're talking about. So, keep your comments to the process of whether we vote for a home rule petition or not. Okay, uh, I will be supporting that we maintain local control uh, on this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Any other councillors? Oh, Councillor Gilman. I need some clarification here. Okay. My understanding was the way if we wanted to put this back out to the voters of Gloucester, it would require us requesting a petition with 10% of our voters signing that they'd like to put this on the ballot. So that's imp I need to understand that because what Councillor Heck just said is contrary to that. And I need to understand that. So maybe um, you could confirm. So, so the, what am I missing here? So, the, so to confirm, the city charter permits a citizen's petition with 10 percent of the, 15 um, percent of the voters to um, to put anything on the ballot. So that option is open about this question or about any other question. So that we're not precluding that from happening. In fact, that's what happened four years ago. So my follow-up to that is, from a, from a fair process standpoint, if we're struggling with that number in terms of procedural matter that we've already asked the voters and they voted a certain way, um, why would we do anything procedurally different than going back to the same process that we went through four years ago to ask the voters what they would like to do and ask that people that are passionate about this would take it upon themselves to get the 15 percent of the voters to put it back on the ballot. Um, so I'm not comfortable with voting for this home rule petition for that reason. So I hope that that clarifies my position. Thank you, Councillor. Any other councillors? So I'm not going to support this either. Um, the voters did speak uh, resoundingly um, uh, three, four years ago. <clears throat> we did, if you recall, had a citizen's petition. The charter uh, says that as any citizen, uh, citizen's petition of 150 signatures can have a public hearing. We had that public hearing about a year and a half ago here in this chamber on whether we should have fluoride in the water. and that. Um, at that time, the, um, we didn't take a vote, but at that time, the information on both sides was presented to the City Council. So I feel comfortable on the, on the information side of this, and uh, I will not be voting. I will respect the voters of Gloucester. Anybody else? So um, we'll take a roll call. Sure. We'll take a roll call on this. Yeah, we already read, read the motion. We have to read it again to the chair. Is that <clears> right? <throat> yep. All right. So the motion states ordinance administration voted unanimously to recommend that the city council forward a home rule petition through the city's state legislative representatives for the purpose of seeking the removal of artificial fluoride from our city of Gloucester's public water supply. So uh, roll call vote, please. Councilor Gilman? No. Councilor Hecht? Yes. Councilor Holgram? No. Councilor Blank? No. Councilor Lumberg? No. Councilor Memhard? No. Councilor Nolan? No. Councilor Hara? Yes. Okay. 
Okay, the motion, city council motion, um, fails on a vote of two in favor, seven opposed, and one absent. Thank you. Two in favor, six opposed, one absent. Thank Sorry. You. Thank you, uh, Madam Clerk. Next order of business. Next order of business, the update of the Council on Aging by Council Representative Councilor Valerie Gilman. Councilor Gilman. Thank you. The, um, there's lots going on at Council on Aging. We've been meeting every single month. And um, first of all, there's a Council on Aging barbecue at Stage Four Park um, on August 15th from 11.15 to 1.15. You can sign up at Rose Baker. We have a generous donation which will allow any senior that signs up at Rose Baker to attend this for free. We had a wonderful turnout at the preview night at Anisquam Village Players with 75 members of the Council on Aging and 50 from Rockport Council on Aging. We had 140 people at the, um, that Monday night. It was absolutely awesome to see so many seniors. Um, Kata um, took a whole load of, of seniors to the event, which is great because of parking can be tight in Anisquam. And one of the funniest things, um, because I was in the politician scene along with Council Lumberg and Senator Tarr and, and Mayor Safathia, um, but one of the things that was precious is that when we debriefed that night at the end of the preview night, one of our probably 14-year-old chorus members raised her hand and said, well, I learned something about seniors tonight. And everybody's looking like, what? And she, and she said, they just love chocolate because we passed out chocolate and we had all, this, all the teens make homemade cookies and we passed them out at intermission and it was just, it was absolutely precious. And um, we have exercise now for parking sins every Thursday afternoon from 2 to 3. We're working really hard. We have one more meeting on the transportation on mass and motion, which is at, um, I know Councillor Cox is the one that is doing it, and it is at Curtis Clark. I believe it's next week. Today, um, Councillor Hecht did his session. Um, Council Holgram has done one. Um, Councillor um, O'Hara has done one. I've, I've had a session and we're really working hard to get input from the seniors on um, mass in motion in the grant that we have for regional transportation on the areas of getting exercise in the community and good nutrition. So it's been wonderful to have city councilors there in partnership with Jennifer Donnelly, who oversees our grants and works for the Board of Health as a Mass and Motion grant writer, and in partnership with Dave Holden from the Gloucester Housing Authority. So it's just, I totally appreciate the partnership with counselors, and the seniors are really enjoying our presence, and I love hearing their ideas about ways that they can take advantage of great transportation so we can get seniors out and about instead of um, being stuck in their um, apartments. So it's a great program. And the final thing I want to mention is that the Open Door and Senior Care are now partnering with the Council on Aging and we're offering wonderful lunches of uh, soup and salads uh, Julie LaFontaine was at our last meeting, um, along with Lenora from um, the um, Senior Care, and they were talking about how they're going to give these wonderfully nutritious lunches to whomever wants them at Rose Baker every day. So we've come a long way, and it really takes a village, and there's just a lot of great things happening for seniors uh, throughout Gloucester. So I just wanted to update you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very important work for our seniors.
being one myself. <clears throat> okay, Madam Clerk. <laughs> oh, and I do, I will uh, recommend going to the uh, barbecue at Stage Fort Park. The entertainment is the Honky Tonk Women, as usual, and uh, it's great fun. And I usually go, and it's a good, good group of people. Okay, Madam Clerk. Is uh, Council's request to the Mayor. Councilor Holmgren, you want to start? Uh, this is not a request, but uh, I'd, I'd just like to share something. Today, my husband and I are celebrating our daughter's ninth birthday, and uh, we're very excited about that. Uh, especially after the news of the past two weeks, we are more grateful than ever that she lives in a community with such strong, compassionate people, people who would do anything to protect her and her peers and to help nurture them into adulthood in safety. But in El Paso, there are currently elementary school teachers asking for help from the wider world to reassure the children in their schools, to reassure them that life isn't always scary and unpredictable, and to reassure them that they are loved and safe. They are asking for citizens of all stripes to send a deluge of postcards to these kids in comfort and in solidarity. And uh, I've posted a couple of elementary school teachers' addresses on my Facebook page, and you're welcome to get them from me via phone or email. I'll also read them into the record, and Dana, I will send them to you, okay? Uh, e. Flores, Hillside Elementary, 4500 Clifton Avenue, El Paso, Texas, 79903. And Teresa Garrett, with two Ts, Tom Lee, L-E-A, Elementary, 4851 Marcus Uribe, U-R-I-B-E Drive, El Paso, Texas, 79934. Please consider. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Memhart. I'd like to just follow up on Councilor Gilman's uh, invitation to all the councilors and also to the public to the uh, planning and development site visit at 930 on Thursday at 116 East Main Street, which is the site of the es Espresso's restaurant. This is a, a, a place that has particular um, importance for me since my rehearsal dinner at my, for my wedding was held at what was then the Down East Oyster House. So it, it, we're going to give it a new future. But uh, th this is an important development, and there's quite a bit of controversy in the neighborhood about attitudes around it, and I'd encourage all of us to attend. I'd also like to invite everyone to the Waterfront Festival, uh, which is this weekend at Stage Fort Park. It's uh, sponsored by our Cape Ann Chamber of Commerce and the Castleberry Fair folks. And it's gonna be a wonderful weekend and it's uh, traditionally a great um, fe festival and uh, crafts fair at our beautiful Stage Fort Park. That's both Saturday and Sunday. And not to be missed, of course, is the Rotary's Pancake Breakfast on Saturday morning. And uh, H Howard Frisch still counts every blueberry that goes into those pancakes. <laughs> Very good, thank you, Councilor. Councilor Nolan? I just want to thank everybody for coming out and supporting the fundraiser for the Magnolia Pier. Uh, we had a lot of support from the administration, from the entire council for making this happen. Um, council O'Hara cooked all night long, and I want to thank him for every part of that. Very hot behind the grill. Um, Councilor Cox worked with the um, auction. Council Holgram donated to it, and Councilor Mamhart. The Ice Man is always there for everybody, and without um, the community and the city all working together, um, this wouldn't be going the way it was. And I want to thank everybody uh, from the bottom of my heart for working with us on this. Thank you. Well done. Very good. Thank you, Council Nolan, Council LeBlanc. I like the Ice Man. That's good. Ice Man. It's going to stick. I would like to request um, through the mayor's office and through our state rep and our Senator Tarr's office that the MBTA and National Grid help clean up their properties along the railroad tracks, especially the knotweed that's been overgrowing into the uh, residents' properties. Um, it's a battle that's not being won by the residents, and I know we have uh, the uh, First Parish Burial Ground and Clark Cemetery off of Commonwealth uh, Centennial Avenue that are being invaded by it also. So with help from them, it'll help stem, you know, it from <clears throat> uh, being so invasive onto the residents' property. 
Um, that's the first thing. And the second thing is I would like to um, give a shout out to the DPW. They've been working for the past two weeks, painting crosswalks all over the city, getting ready for the school season. They look amazing. So kudos to you guys. Thank you very much. Councilor oh, so Hecht. Thank you. Um, just a couple things. Well, there's only one. Uh, in addition to the uh, Rotary breakfast coming up on Saturday, I wanted to uh, give a shout out. Uh, tomorrow night at 5.30, the undefeated City of Gloucester softball team is going to take on Beverly. Our record is zero and zero. We're undefeated, and we're going into this very tough battle. So that's at 5.30 tomorrow night. Uh, city employees against city employees, ours against Beverly, and it's at Innocent Field for McPherson Drive in Beverly. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for participating. Yeah. Councilor Gilman? I'm excited, a little bit nervous about this game. I was looking for my first baseman's mitt and I couldn't even find it, but I'm, I'm going to be there representing our city, so if I'm not playing, maybe I'll be keeping score of being the first base. Um, coach. So anyway, that's exciting. Thanks for mentioning. I wanted to uh, mention to the um, public, and I know all of you know that we're starting the paving and the complete street sidewalk on Reynard Street on the 21st of August. A lot of us use that as a crossroad, and there will be three weeks of work. We've, been, we've paid special attention because we're going to overlap into the school year for two weeks. Um, Mike Hale assures us that all the students will have police detail to make sure that they can pass through. And we're not going to start the Poplar Road paving um, until after that project. Um, Council of the Blank and I share that, and I had some questions come up of people saying, are we going to be doing it all at once, and it will be a gridlock. And, I spoke to Mike this morning and he assured us that that will not happen until after Reynard Street um, ends the project. So that's one thing I wanted to say and I have, um, I also wanted to thank the administration, uh, Mayor Safathia, Jim Destino and um, Chief Conley for their great help in the ward meeting that we had last Wednesday. Um, on August 7th at the Lanesville Community Center. We had about 65 people. It was great having the mayor and Jim um, alternate talking about the city and about our budget and about free cash. And, and then Chief Conley came in to talk about enforcement, both in speeding, signage, and in the quarries. And it was really a, a great feeling of working together. So um, I totally appreciate their attendance and the feedback that I've received from my constituents have been very positive. Councilor O'Hara joined me at the meeting and um, I, think, I think it was really a good meeting. So if you want to read the notes that was, were taken, it's on my Wood 4 Facebook page. And then I have two quick requests to the mayor. Um, I w would request the, the, that the DPW install a no parking here to corner sign at the intersection of Leonard Street and Bridgewater. Second, I'd um, like to request that the, the Public Works Department repaints the fog line on the Squam Hill Road side of Walnut Street. I've spoken to Mike Hale about both of those and um, he understands the importance for different reasons, um, but I just wanted to formally put in the request. So that's it. So Great. thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, Councilor O'Hara. All good. Um, okay, motion to adjourn. Second, we're, we're adjourned. <laughs>